डेंसिटी ऑफ द मटेरियल इज सेम थ्रू आउट और यू कैन से थ्रू आउट द मटेरियल द रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ द प्रिज्म इज सेम प्रिज्म इज सॉलिड होमोजीनियस एंड रिफ्रेक्टिंग मीडियम रिफ्रेक्टिव मीडियम मीन when the light will pass through the prism the light will get refracted bounded by two plane surfaces Bo plane surfaces remember bounded by two plane surfaces inclined at some angle so you can see uh, these are two plane surfaces one surface is this another surface is this and these are these are the inclined surfaces and this angle made by these surfaces is known as the angle of prism is known as the angle of prism so first refracting surface is this another refracting surface is this a is known as the angle of prism if you will see this prism from the front like this so this prism will look to you like a triangle okay so this portion you will see only only this portion will be visible from the front side so this is the front view of the front view view of the prism okay so basically uh, for the derivation purpose for solving the numerical purpose we will draw the prism like this and this a is the angle of the prism a is the angle of the prism okay so we will see the refraction through prism how the light is getting refracted from the prism okay and i will tell you what is the angle of deviation also okay now focus on this focus so this is a glass prism uh, prism and uh, around it there is air there is air around it and uh, this is the angle of prism this prism is just you can say glass prism or you can say simply a prism okay and this is a incident ray this is incident this incident ray is coming from the air and now this incident ray is entering to this another medium so this another medium the incident ray is entering so we will draw the normal first like this this is the normal whenever there is a refraction and you have to show the incident and the refracted ray draw the normal okay so as compared to air the material of the prism is denser so this ray of light will bend towards the normal so it will be like this this will bend towards the normal like this okay no problem <clears throat> for suppose uh, this angle is the angle of incidence so i is the angle of incidence so i is the angle of incidence and this angle is suppose r1 is suppose r1 angle of refraction with respect to this surface now here you can see after refracting from this surface the light ray is going in this direction now again there will be refraction because this light ray is going from denser medium to rarer medium prism to air again we will draw the normal to show the refracted ray and the incident ray normal mean normal this is the normal what is the meaning of normal normal means uh this angle na this angle will be 90 degree this angle okay this angle will be 90 degree this is the normal so remember this so now the light ray is moving from denser to the rarer medium 
सो इट विल बेंड टूवर्ड द नॉर्मल अवे फ्रॉम द नॉर्मल सवाज टेल मी लाइट रे हेयर इज जस्ट पासिंग फ्रॉम डेंसर एंड एंटरिंग टू रेर सो इट विल बेंड अवे फ्रॉम द नॉर्मल और टूवर्ड द नॉर्मल डर दिस पॉइंट एज ए एंड दिस पॉइंट एज बी पॉइंट Okay, this is a point, and this is and this is first surface, and this is the second surface. Okay, this is the first surface, this is the second surface. First surface and second surface, and uh, this is the incident ray, this is the refracted ray, and for this surface, this is the incident ray, and this is the refracted ray, and final uh, refracted ray is known as the emergent ray. this ray is known as the emergent ray because this ray is emerging from the prism that is why this is known as the emergent ray and the angle of this ray with normal will known as the angle of refraction and that angle of refraction is known as the angle of emergence angle of emergence angle of emergence angle of emergence so uh, suppose this angle of incidence is r r2 this is the angle of incidence for this surface this is the angle of refraction for this surface but this angle of refraction we call it emergence angle of emergence okay now see the incident ray this is the path of the incident ray and just produce the path of path of the incident ray when suppose there is no prism so this ray will go like this suppose when there is no prism so this ray will not suffer any kind of deviation it will pass straight okay this ray will pass straight if there is no prism but what is happening here this is the incident ray and this is the final ray but you can see here this final ray is getting some deviation so to find the angle of deviation just produce this emergent ray in the backward direction so this is the final ray so this Hmm. this angle which angle this angle this angle is known as the angle of deviation del del is the angle of deviation this del okay angle of deviation this angle of deviation we have to find here in terms of the angle of incidence angle of emergence and angle of prism okay very easy uh see this triangle suppose this is o uh this is o this is a and this is b see in triangle oab in triangle oab see what will be this angle this angle i have to show this with this color this angle see this whole angle this whole uh, from here to here this whole angle angle will be i because vertically opposite angle so this angle will be i minus r1 okay this will be i minus r1 similarly this angle will be e minus r2 because this whole angle will be angle e and this is r2 and you want to find this angle so this angle will be e minus r2 
vertically opposite angle now see in triangle oab triangle o a v this angle del this angle and this angle and this angle these are the interior angle and this is the exterior angle of, of triangle o a p so uh, we know that exterior angle of any triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angle so these are the opposite interior angle so you can write here del is the exterior angle exterior angle and this angle and this angle are the opposite inter interior angle of triangle oab so you can write del is equal to you can write del is equal to sum of this angle plus this angle i plus r1 plus oh i minus r1 sorry this angle is i minus r1 na? so i minus r1 plus e minus r2 exterior angle is equal to this angle plus this angle sum of opposite interior angle so i can write del is equal to i plus e minus i plus e minus r1 plus r2 this is equation number 1 now uh, this is normal 1 this is normal 2 now what we will do we will just extend these normal extend these normal so this is the normal so i am ex extending this normal like this and extend this normal also so both these normals are meeting here okay hmm. so here these uh, normals are meeting suppose this point is as point p and this point is as point q so at point P, both normals are meeting. So this is uh, angle A here. This will be some angle. So now see in this triangle A, P or B. A, P or B. A, P, B triangle. So this angle is R1. This angle is R2. Can we find this angle? Angle P. This angle P will be 180 minus R1 minus R2. This angle will be. 180 minus r1 plus r2 okay plus r2 because sum of the angles of our triangle is 180 degree so 180 minus sum of these angles will be this angle so now we have angle a we have angle b we have angle p we have angle uh, we have angle q a p b so now see this quadrilateral Q A P B quadrilateral like triangle we have now. So triangle have three sides. Quadrilateral have four sides. So see the triangle A Q B P or A B Q P you can write. So you can write in quadrilateral in quadrilateral. A, B or it is better to write A, P, B, Q, A, P, B, Q, A, P, B, Q. Uh, some of the angles of quadrilateral, can anyone tell me? Like in case of triangle, sum of all the angles equal to 180 degree. What is the sum of the angles of a quadrilateral? 
sum of all the internal angles of a quadrilateral. Very good. 360 degree. Fine. So you can write angle A plus angle P plus angle B plus angle Q is equal to 360 degree. So angle A is 90 degree. This will be the angle in a this this will be the angle A of the quadrilateral 90 degree. So this is 90 degree. What is angle P? Angle this this is the angle P 180 minus R1 plus R2. 180 minus R1 plus R2. Now what is angle B? Angle B is again 90 degree because this is normal. So this is also 90 degree. Now what is angle Q? Angle Q is ang A. Angle Q is angle of prism. That is A. This is A. So is equal to 360 degree. Now see, this is 90, this is 90, 90, 90, 180 and 180, 360. So this 360 and this 360 will be cancelled out. So finally you will get A is equal to R1 plus R2. This is equation number 2. Now put R1 plus R2 as A. You will get the value of angle of deviation. So you will get I plus E minus A. So angle of deviation in case of prism is this. I is the angle of incidence. E is the angle of emergence. A is the angle of prism. I plus E minus A. Okay, take the screenshot. So we are studying the geometrical optics and I have used the geometry to find the angle of deviation. Okay, take the screenshot of this all of you, Hamza and Fawaz and Nida. Hello, Hamza. Okay, Fawaz completed. Okay. Hmm. E ki jaga. Ne, e ki jaga wo. Uh, Where? This na. Ye kya reva? Ye wala. Main, main ye kaise put kar diya hi? Uh, ye wala na. Yahan pe. Isme. Mic on karke bol. Haan. Yahan pe. You have to do like this. Uh, you can see here, this is I and this is plus E. I can write it as, so this is delta. So I can write it as first I plus E. So I plus E and what we have? Minus R1 minus R2. Minus R1 minus R2. Now, del, you can write I plus E. Now from here, take minus common from R1 and R2. Take minus common. So when you will take minus common, so it will become R1 plus R2. I am not telling this because you are in the 12th class. Okay. So Fawaz completed this derivation. Hamza completed. Any one of you have any doubt, you can ask me instantly, no problem. Okay. Now this is the angle of deviation. Angle of deviation. Del is the angle of deviation. So what is the meaning of the angle of deviation is what is the significance of angle of deviation. 
so angle of deviation tells that how much the incident ray is got deviated this is the path of the incident ray when there is no refraction but actual path of the ray is this when you will produce this this angle will be known as the angle of deviation and this signify or significance of angle of deviation is how much by how much angle the incident ray is deviated due to the prism okay okay so now we are moving now we will see uh, this angle of deviation means remember for different different types of prism and for different different angle of incidence the angle of deviation of changes obviously the you can see if you will change the angle of incidence then the angle of deviation will change but there is a particular value of angle of incidence for which the angle of deviation becomes minimum for a particular incident ray or you can say for a particular angle of incidence the angle of deviation becomes minimum and we and we will see now uh on which factors this angle of deviation is depending in your uh, practical class in your laboratory you have i think you have the laboratory also in your school so there there is a derive uh, practical also uh, there we find out the refractive index or i think uh, the angle of deviation with the help of the experiment so uh, we will see this angle of deviation uh, means the factor what are the factors on which the angle of deviation is depending so these factors are just uh, like refractive index of the prism like the wavelength of the prism like the angle of the prism means uh, how angle of and angle of deviation is depending on these factors these uh, dependency means this dependency uh, dependency is given experimentally okay so here are some uh, factors on which the angle of deviation will depend okay so first we will solve this question and then we will see or uh, first we should see that factor on which the angle of deviation is depending you can see here factor on which the angle of deviation depends this is the experimental analysis so refractive index of the prism refractive index of the prism so suppose you have this prism here and this is the incident this is the prism and this prism have the angle of prism a and light ray is going like this and this light ray is passing from the prism and after this what will happen refraction will takes place like this and again the refraction will takes place as again the medium is changing so this is the normal uh, we will draw the normal here normal one normal and this is the another normal of the surface so this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of emergence this is the angle of the prism and refractive index of the prism is mu mu is the refractive index of the prism so experimentally it is found that when you will increase the refractive index of the prism when you will increase the refractive index of the prism 
angle of deviation for the prism will will increase the sign is representing the increase and it is also find out that if you will increase the angle of the prism suppose uh, uh, this is a prism having the angle of prism uh, 30 degree after that you have taken another prism having the angle of prism 60 degree so in the another prism that have the angle of prism 60 degree have the more deviation so on increasing the angle of the prism the deviation increases wavelength of the light uh, so you can just uh, point out this from this point you know the you know that whenever the um, wavelength of the light increases wavelength of the light increases refractive index decreases if refractive index decreases angle of deviation will also decreases so if wavelength of light increases angle of deviation will decrease so wavelength of light mean we have this this is the violet color and this extreme is the red color we know that wavelength of the red light is much greater than the wavelength of violet light so you can say the angle of deviation for the violet light or you can say the angle of deviation for the red light angle of deviation for the red light will be much less than the angle of deviation for the violet light so you will see the red light deviated least and the violet light deviated deviated most why because the wavelength of the red light red light is most and the wavelength of the violet light is least so you can say that when you will move from here to here in this direction so the wavelength will decrease or uh, increase sorry and angle of deviation will decrease now there is a graph Uh, between the angle of incidence and the angle of deviation so what happens when you will increase the angle of uh, incidence suppose this angle of incidence suppose this time is 30 degree after that i have increased to 60 degree 70 degree 75 degree and we accordingly we are checking the angle of deviation so it is seen experimentally that it is observed experimentally that when you are increasing the angle of incidence okay the angle of deviation first increases after that it becomes minimum and after that again it increases so this is a graph like this the graph between the angle of deviation and angle of incidence so what happened suppose here is some value of angle of incidence i 1 so for this value suppose the angle of deviation is this suppose this is del 1 now after that you will increase the angle of incidence the angle of deviation will decrease and finally there is a value of angle of incidence where the angle of deviation will be minimum okay and remember this point for this del 1 there will be two value of angle of incidence i1 and i2 for i1 also there is del 1 for i2 also there is del 1 so this deviation is for i1 and i2 
and remember this graph is a not symmetrical graph this graph is not a symmetrical graph this is not a parabolic graph so if you will take this distance suppose this is x1 distance and this is suppose x2 distance so you will find that x2 will be greater than x1 so not a parabolic graph so it is not symmetric and uh, you can see here this is uh, there is only one angle of incidence for which the angle of deviation is minimum so angle of deviation is minimum for one value of angle of incidence so this graph we draw there when we do the experiment okay so you have taken this also this okay so now you can take the screenshot all of you Fawaz, uh, Nida, and Hamza, my voice is okay, na? Is it clear, na? Mm, yes, sir. Okay. okay, write down. Now we will solve one numerical. Complete it, Hamza. Hamza, have you completed this? Okay. So we will see uh, this question. In this question, uh, there is an this is a prism, equilateral prism, and this is the incident ray. Incident ray, and this is the normal to this surface of the prism, and this incident ray uh, is making an angle of sixty degree. Means what is given? what is given here angle of incidence is given as 60 degree and one more thing is given uh, refractive index of this prism is given as root 3 refractive index of this prism is given as root 3 we have to find the angle of emergence and angle of deviation okay angle of emergence and angle of deviation so angle of incidence is given that is equal to 60 degree and uh, refractive index is given we have to find the angle of emergence so for this now we have to draw the ray diagram first here the refraction will take place from this surface the refraction will take place so light will bend towards the normal like this 
and from here again we will draw one normal and he, from here the light will bend away from the normal light will bend away from the normal so basically what angle we want we want this angle angle of emergence suppose this angle is uh, r1 and suppose this angle is r2 so what we will do uh, <clears throat> an angle of prism will be because this is the equilateral prism so this angle will be 60 degree so angle of the prism is also given as 60 degree we will apply the snell's law on this surface this is the first surface so on the first surface we will apply the snell's law so how to apply the snell's law here is air so refractive index is 1 so what we will do refractive index 1 multiplied by sin 60 refractive index of the medium the for this interface c the refraction for this interface apply the snell's law for this so refractive index of this medium and sin of angle with normal sin of angle with normal is sin of 60 degree is equal to refractive index of this medium that is root 3 multiplied by sin of angle with normal that is sin of r 1 sin 60 is root 3 divided by 2 and here is root 3 sin r 1 so root 3 and root 3 will be cancel out so you will get sin of r 1 is equal to 1 by 2 so this 1 by 2 can be written as sin of 30 degree so sin r1 you have sin 30 degree means you can say r1 you will get 30 degree for the prism there is a relation between the angle of the prism and r1 and r2 angle of the prism is equal to r1 plus r2 we have seen in the last derivation so angle of prism is 60 degree r1 is 30 degree and uh this formula this you are saying this or you are saying this no here uh, this uh, up one this is the snell's law yeah? this is very famous thing we have used many times okay okay the snell's law okay refractive index of one medium multiplied by sin of angle with normal refractive index of another medium multiplied by sin of angle with normal for the another medium this is uh, just we have proved a equal to r1 plus r2 so remember this also a equal to r1 plus r2 okay this is uh, r1 is 30 degree and r2 we can find from here so we will get r2 60 minus 30 r2 we will get 30 degree so this angle we have now 30 degree and we have the refractive index of this medium we have the refractive index of this medium and we want to find the angle of emergence now apply the snell's law for the second surface this surface this is the second surface second surface apply snell's law how to apply the snell's law choose any of the medium you can choose this medium so refractive index of this medium multiplied by sin of angle with normal means root 3 multiplied by sin r2 means root 3 multiplied by sin r2 is equal to refractive index of the medium multiplied by sin e 
means refractive index of air is one and sine of t. So root three, what is R two? R two is sine thirty. R two is thirty degree. Okay, so this is equal to sine e. So it is root three and sine thirty is one by two is equal to sine e. From here, sine e is equal to root three divided by two, and root three divided by two is sine of sixty degree. So you have sine e is equal to sine sixty. Means you have angle of emergence is equal to sixty degree. Angle of emergence, you have find it out, 60 degree. Now you can find the angle of deviation also. So angle of deviation is equal to angle of incidence plus angle of emergence minus angle of prism. Angle of incidence, 60 degree. So put here 60 degree. Angle of emergence is 60 degree. Angle of prism. This is the angle of prism A again 60 degree. So the answer will be 60 degree. So deflection for this incident angle will be 60 degree. Okay, write down. Take the screenshot. Okay. So this is the particular value of angle of incidence, and for this particular value of angle of incidence, there is an angle of deviation. There will be one particular value of angle of incidence for which the angle of deviation will be minimum. For which? the angle of deviation will be minimum and in that case the angle of incidence also becomes equal to the angle of emergence and in that case this r1 and r2 are also becomes equal so now we will see the refractive index of the medium uh, refractive index of the prism so mu is the refractive index of the prism see what i have written when angle of deviation is minimum means when angle of deviation del is equal to minimum so in that case what have what will happen you have to remember this angle of incidence becomes angle of emergence and r1 and r2 also becomes equal this r1 and r2 also becomes equal for example for example for this prism for this uh, prism the angle of incidence for which the angle of uh, deviation is minimum is 30 degree so angle of emergence will also become 30 degree 
and R1 and R2 are also becomes equal. Remember this point. Minimum uh, for for any angle of incidence for any angle minimum for any value of angle of incidence i so angle of incidence in that case also becomes equal to the angle of emergence and r1 r2 are also equal that is equal to r so you can see here this angle is 30 degree and this is r1 this angle is 30 degree this is r2 so symmetrical condition are there so r1 and r2 you can just from the symmetry you can say r1 and r2 are equal r1 and r2 are equal and mu is the refractive index of the prism mu is the refractive index of the prism okay now we will find the relation between the we will find the relation between the angle uh, of the prism refractive index of the prism and the minimum angle of deviation minimum angle of deviation so for that uh, so we are finding we are finding the relation between refractive index of prism refractive index of prism angle of prism and minimum angle of deviation for prism minimum angle of deviation for prism Okay, so for that I am taking one prism. So this is a triangular prism. This is a triangular prism. And suppose for this incident ray, suppose for this incident ray, This is the normal. Suppose for this incident ray, having the angle of incidence i, this ray will suffer the minimum deviation. This ray will suffer the minimum deviation. Means the deviation of this ray will be the minimum deviation. Okay. So we will complete the ray diagram like this, no? Again, we will draw normal. This time, the ray of light will bend away from the normal. This is N1, suppose this is N2. This is the angle of emergence. So if uh, this ray is suffering the minimum deviation, so we have to show, show the deviation also. So just produce this ray like this and produce the emergent ray like this. This angle is the angle of deviation this angle this angle is the minimum deviation 
del minimum this angle will be the minimum deviation for this particular angle the angle of deviation is minimum for this particular ray so if this angle becomes minimum na so in that case if this angle is the angle means for this ray for this incident angle if the angle of deviation is the minimum then you can say that then you can say that the incident angle also equal to the emergent angle and you can also say that r1 is equal to r2 now r1 and r2 means uh, this angle will be r r1 r2 this angle this angle will be r1 and this angle will be r2 okay so this angle is the angle of refraction for this surface this angle is the r2 is the angle of incidence for this surface we have discussed with normal the this ray is making an angle that is angle of incidence so r1 is equal to r2 and uh, suppose a is the angle of the prism a is the angle of the prism so now we know that a is equal to r1 plus r2 in case of prism r1 plus r2 but both r1 and r2 are r1 and r2 are equal and suppose that is equal to r so you can write this a is equal to 2r from here you can write r is equal to a by 2 from here you can write r is equal to a by 2 this is the case when the ray is suffering the minimum deviation one more relation we have angle of deviation is equal to angle of incidence plus angle of emergence minus angle of the prism but in this in this case what we have del is equal to del minimum so put here and i and e both are equal i is equal to e so i can write it as del minimum this is equal to 2i minus a okay this i this is i and e is also equal to i so i and i become 2i so from here we can find the angle of incidence so how can we find so it will be del minimum plus a is equal to 2i so from here you can find a plus del minimum divided by 2 this is your equation number second now for this surface the suppose this surface is the first surface apply the snell's law apply the snell's law for the first surface so for first surface apply snell's law snell's law so here is air here is also air so here the refractive index of air is 1 and refractive index of the prism is mu that we have to find mu is the refractive index of given prism when we will apply the snell's law we will take the refractive index mu of air medium multiplied by sine of angle of i so 1 into sin i is equal to mu into sin r1 or sin r you can say mu into sin r1 but r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r so you can write sin i is equal to mu into sin r now put the value of i and r what is i i is a plus del minimum by 2 so put here a plus minimum angle of deviation divided by 2 is equal to refractive index of the prism and what is the r 
R is a by two. So R is a by two. From here you can find the refractive index of the prism that is mu is equal to sine a plus minimum angle of deviation divided by two divided by uh, here it will be sine a by two. It will be sine a by two. So you will write sine of angle of prism divided by two. So in examination, minimum uh, minimum angle of deviation for the uh, prism can be given and angle of prism can be given and uh, they can ask you find out the refractive index of the prism. Take the screenshot. Hamza, are you taking screenshots or not? Okay. So after this, now we will discuss the refraction. Uh, uh, till now, we have discussed the refraction through the plane surfaces. Through the plane surfaces. Now we will discuss the refraction through the spherical surfaces, like this. This is the spherical surface. This is the spherical surface, and this has some another medium. Okay. So. Okay, so so now you can see here, na, this is the center of curvature. Basically, uh, this is the object, and uh, this is some uh, this surface. Na, this surface is the spherical surface. This is the spherical surface, and this is the principal axis, and this is the pole, and this is the center of curvature. So distance between the distance between the pole. And the center of curvature is known as the radius of curvature. And this distance is the object distance, small u. We know this. U. And this formula we are, uh, we will get. Okay. Remember few points. Uh, all distances measure from pole. So we will measure all the distances from the pole. Earlier also, I have told you. 
and another is distance measured in the direction of incident light is positive and against it is negative so remember this point if you are measuring the distance in the direction of the incident light then it will be considered as positive otherwise if you are measuring the distance in the uh, opposite direction of the incident light that it will be considered as negative okay so here uh, see this okay uh, this is the object and this is the spherical surface so suppose this object from this object a ray of light is like this this is the incident ray okay this is the incident ray as this is a spherical surface so normal of this spherical surface this will pass from the center of curvature so curvature so we will draw the center of uh, we will draw the normal so normal will pass from the center of curvature this is the normal for uh, for as for an instance uh, suppose this ray is in the rarer medium and going to the denser medium this n1 is the refractive index of this medium here and n2 is the refractive index of the medium in which the light is going so this can be any other medium also this spherical so light is going from rarer to rarer, denser suppose so what will happen it will bend towards the normal it will bend towards the normal so from here light will bend towards the normal like this bend towards the normal suppose this angle is the angle of this angle will be the angle of incidence because this is the incident ray and this is the normal so this is the angle of incidence suppose this angle is theta 1 and this will be the angle of refraction the suppose this is theta 2 and suppose okay one minute uh this thing clear nida fawaz and hamza till here clear yes sir this is the object o is the object here so finally the refracted ray is here going passing from here now one thing i have told you uh, here i think whenever a ray of light there are the two cases i have told you uh, this case i have told you whenever there is a normal incidence whenever there is a normal incidence light ray will pass straight so a ray from this object normal i am just uh, this object is giving a ray i am taking a ray from this object normal to this surface and that ray will pass straight and that ray will not suffer any kind of refraction or any kind of bending so it will go straight like this so both the rays will meet uh, here okay both the rays this this is the first refracted ray this is the another refracted ray both the rays will meet here here means both the rays will meet go this ray will go straight like this and meet here so here the image of the object will form here the image of the object is form now what we will do actually we want to derive this relation n2 by v n1 by u is equal to n2 minus n1 by r this is the derivation so what i am doing i am just drawing a normal 
from this point. This is the normal. And this point is P dash. And this point is suppose M. This point is M and this, this point is P dash where the normal is in false. P dash. Now there are certain assumptions and this angle suppose alpha and suppose this angle is beta and suppose this angle is gamma. So there are certain assumptions that we will use. So these assumptions we have. Rays are paraxial. Paraxial means this ray and this ray are very close. Or you can say this ray and this ray means this ray is very close to this principal axis. This is the this is the principal axis. This ray is very close to sorry. This ray is very close to this ray. Paraxial. If these rays are very close, then you can say this alpha angle, theta angle, theta 2 angle, beta angle, and gamma angle are very, very small. For example, if these rays are very close, the distance between this, these rays will decrease like this. So decreasing now? If these rays are if the, these rays are getting close, so all angles are decreasing. So you can say rays are paraxial, so alpha, beta, gamma, alpha, beta, gamma, theta 2 and theta 1 are very small. Theta 1 and theta 2 are very small. And one more thing that is very important here. This P, the distance between P and P dash becomes very, very, very small so that the P and P dash point will coincide. Or you can say P dash is tending to P. So you can write OP is equal to OP dash. This distance OP, you can also write OP dash. This distance CP, you can also write CP dash. This distance IP, you can also write IP dash. And what is OP? Object distance. And object distance, now you can see here the direction of the incident ray is this. Means this direction you will take positive. And this direction you will take negative. So now when you are measuring the object distance, so you will measure the distance from the pole. So this is the pole. So you will, you have to move in this direction means you are moving in this direction means in the negative direction. So object distance, you will take negative. Now this distance, uh, this distance, this R for measuring R, you are moving in this direction means in this direction. So this R will be positive. Now for measuring the image distance, you have to move from pole to the image. So you will move in this direction, in this direction means positive image distance. This distance will be the image distance. This will also be positive. This image distance V will also be positive. OK. Uh, now see uh, this triangle O M P dash triangle O M uh, no no, no. Uh, C triangle O M C okay C triangle O M C so you can write in triangle O M C this theta one is the exterior angle and alpha and beta are the interior angle. So sum of the opposite interior angle is equal to the exterior angle. So I can write theta 1 is equal to alpha plus beta. Theta 1 is equal to alpha plus beta. Now see this triangle. Uh, triangle 
सी एम आई ट्राइंगल सी एम आई सो दिस बीटा इज द एक्सटीरियर एंगल एंड थीटा टू एंड गामा आर द इंटीरियर एंगल सो आई कैन राइट बीटा इज इक्वल टू थीटा टू प्लस गामा इन ट्राइंगल इन ट्राइंगल सी एम आई आई कैन राइट बीटा इज इक्वल टू दिस बीटा इज इक्वल टू थीटा टू प्लस गामा थीटा टू प्लस गामा From here we can find theta two, that is gamma minus beta. Okay. Now we will find tan alpha, tan beta, tan gamma. First start with tan alpha. So tan alpha. so for tan alpha we will go to this triangle triangle o m p dash so suppose this height is h m p dash is h so you can just say tan alpha is equal to perpendicular that is m p dash divided by o p dash you can write m p dash divided by o p dash m p dash is h and o p dash o p dash from here you can write o p it is h what is op this op you will take minus u it is minus u so tan alpha you have h divided by minus u similarly you can find tan beta so tan beta c beta so you have to go for this triangle m p dash into c so tan beta you can write h by c p dash tan beta you can write h by c into p dash so it will become h by c into p dash can be written as cp now c what is cp cp is r and r is plus r so it will be h by r so tan of beta is equal to h by r now tan gamma so tan gamma this is gamma na so see this triangle so you can write h by ip dash and ip dash can be written as ip so you can write h by v h by v h y b i am writing it directly now but we know that uh, alpha beta and gamma these angles are very small angles if these angles are very small angles then tan of alpha can be approximately equal to alpha tan of beta can be written as approximately equal to beta tan of gamma can be approximately equal to gamma so now tan alpha is equal to alpha so you can write from here alpha is equal to tan alpha can be written as alpha so alpha is equal to h upon minus u h upon minus u beta can be written as h of pi r gamma can be written as h by v you can check okay now uh, for this surface surface apply snell's law apply snell's law snell's law so how to apply snell's law refractive index of this medium multiply by sin theta 1 means n1 sin theta 1 refractive index of this medium n2 into sin theta 2 n2 into 
sin theta 2 we know that theta 1 and theta 2 also very small so sin theta 1 can be written as theta 1 sin theta 2 can be written as theta 2 so now put instead of this sin theta 1 put theta 1 instead of this time sin theta 2 put theta 2 so you can write n1 into theta 1 is equal to n2 into theta 2 so n1 what is the value of theta 1 theta 1 is equal to alpha plus beta so it is alpha plus beta what is theta 2 theta 2 is gamma minus beta it is gamma minus beta now put the value of alpha beta and gamma so it is n1 put the value of alpha alpha is h upon minus u so it is h upon minus u plus what is beta h y r so put h y r is equal to n2 put the value of gamma gamma is h y r we know minus what is beta beta is h y p so now take h common from here take h common from here and h when you will take common it will cancel out so you will have minus of n1 by u plus you will okay so i am just taking common okay so we can write n1 into h n1 into h 1 upon minus u plus 1 by r is equal to n2 into h 1 by r minus 1 by v so now you can say h and h will be cancel out so you will have n minus n1 by u plus n1 by r is equal to n2 by r minus n2 by v okay so if this is n2 into h n2 into h and h and h will cancel out okay now uh, this n2 you will take this side so it will become plus n2 by v you can write n2 by v minus n1 by u is equal to n2 by r minus n1 by r so n2 by v minus n1 by u is equal to we can take r common so it is written as n2 minus n1 by r so this is the final result so remember n2 is the refractive index of medium in which light is going and n1 refractive index of medium from which light is coming so n1 is the refractive index of the medium from this medium the light is coming and in this medium the light is going and you know what is v v is the image distance what is u object distance and what is r radius of curvature radius of curvature
this is lengthy derivation but uh, when you will do practice you can do it easily write down Uh, done, Nida, Fawaz, Hamza. So we are using geometry here. Hamza, are you taking the screenshots? Yes, sir. So the, keep in mind these assumptions. Without these assumptions, they cannot do derivation. This is lengthy, but if it will appear in exam, it will be of four marks, I think. So Snell's law is very important here in case of the refraction. Now, uh, Nida, you have told me na, to tell you doubts. Six question number six. So we will uh, pause. So this derivation na, uh, shift through the glass slab. Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Today, I think it will not be possible. So maybe we will do in the next class or we will do separately. I will take a class and we will do that on Friday. Okay. 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 okay Fawaz and Hamza, if you want, then you can leave the meeting. Nida, uh, we will discuss that question. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Fine. Okay, so uh, this is the question. It is given that two charges here, two charges, uh, one charge, suppose Q1 is the charge, one charge, and here is Q2. One charge is of 60 into uh, 10 to the power minus Q1 is uh, 16 into 10 to the power ni minus 9 coulomb. 16 into 10 to the power minus. See the question in your phone or whatever you have. 
otherwise there will be problem for you and another charge is here and that charge is of minus 40 into 10 to the power minus 9 coulomb okay in the and these charges are placed at a distance of 0.12 meter okay these charges are placed at a separation of 0.12 meter apart they are saying find the potential potential v potential is k into charge divided by r k q y r so first let me tell you what is the how to calculate the potential suppose here a charge is placed at at a at a point a which is at a separation of r so due to this charge q if you want to find the potential at point a so the potential at point a is given by k q divided by r what is k k is 9 into 10 to the power 9 in si units okay so <clears throat> they are asking uh, first part midway between the two charge so here is a point uh, suppose this point is b this point is m midway between the two charges so if this point is in the in midway mid means so this distance will be 0.06 meter and this distance will also be 0.06 meter okay so here at point m you you have to find the potential so uh, suppose this charge is placed at a suppose this charge is placed at p so you want to find the potential first at point m at point m so potential at point m is equal to potential at point m due to a plus the potential at point m due to b so due to this charge a at point m the potential will be k q by r hmm? k into q1 divided by r1 plus k into q2 divided by r2 and r1 is this and r2 is this so uh, take the uh, okay so right here k right q q is 60 into 10 to the power minus 9 nida are you getting okay so due to this charge at this point the potential is k and charge divided by r k into charge and r is the 0.06 okay 0.06 plus k and another charge is minus 40 into 10 to the power minus 9 so minus 40 into 10 to the power minus 9 divided by r r is again 0.06 now uh, you can take common you can take this uh, what thing you can take common you can take 0.06 common and you can take k as common you can take k common you can take 0.06 common and you can take 10 to the power 9 minus 9 as common so what you will have here you will have here 60 minus 40 now put the value of k put the value of k so i have told you k is 9 into 10 to the power 9 and here is 10 to the power minus 9 and it will be 0.06 multiplied by 20 so this and this will be cancel out so when you will remove this point here it will be 100 okay so you can just cancel it out very easily 3 3 is a 9 and 3 2 is a 6 and 2 10 is a oh 2 1 2 10 is a 20 so your answer will be 3 into 10 into 100 your answer will be 3 into 10 to the power 
थ्री इंटू टेन टू दावर थ्री वोल्ट सो द पोटेंशियल एट पॉइंट एम इज दिस फर्स्ट पार्ट सेकेंड पार्ट ओके जस्ट वन मिनट ओके सो नेक्स्ट पार्ट सेकंड पार्ट सो इन द सेकंड पार्ट दे आर सेइंग सेम सिचुएशन गिवन इन आंसर नंबर बी इन आंसर नंबर बी मीन इन सेकंड पार्ट व्हाट दे आर आस्किंग दे आर आस्किंग द फाइंड द पोटेंशियल एट अ पॉइंट 0.04 मीटर टू द राइट ऑफ दिस means this time na we have to find the potential to the right of this at at a distance of 0.04 meter very easy question this is also very easy okay so q2 is placed at point b and q1 is placed at point a now you have to find the potential suppose at point p so this is the point p here you have to find the potential again very easy question calculation is there only so you want to find the potential at point p so potential at point p will be due to the charge at point a and charge at point b so you will write uh, the potential due to charge q1 at a at point p plus potential due to the charge at point b at, at point p neither are you getting or not this is very easy question means here you have to find the potential so potential here will be due to charge at a potential here due to charge at point b okay so it is right like this potential due to q1 at point p plus potential due to q2 at point p now uh, apply the formula k q y r so it will be k this time q1 y r1 plus k q2 y r2 so what is k k is k put the value of q1 q1 is 16 into 10 to the power minus 9 16 into 10 to the power minus 9 what is r1 r1 we you will take ap r1 you will take ap so means you will take 0.12 and 0.04 means it will become 0.16 it will become 0.16 plus k into another charge is this minus 40 into 10 to the power minus 9 and this distance you will take from charge q2 this point p is at a distance of 0.04 so it will be 0.04 now take common you can take uh, common here k and 10 to the power 9 you can take k into 10 to the power minus 9 common so you will have uh, 60 divided by 0.16 Minus 40 divided by 0.04. Now k can be written as 9 into 10 to the power 9, and here is 10 to the power minus 9, and here you can take LCM as 0.16. When you will take LCM 0.16, here it will be 60, and here it will be 4. When you will divide 0.16 with this, it will become 4, and when you will multiply that 4 with 40, that will become 160. this is just a calculation so this and this gone so you, here you will have 9 and multiplied by 
60 minus 160, it will minus 100. And here is 0 0.16. Remove the point. Here you will have the 100. Okay. So now cancel this. Uh, it will be 50. It will be 8. It will be 4. It will be 25. It will be 50. Okay. It will be 2. It will be 25. So 25 into 25, 625 into 9. Okay. You will have minus 9 into 625. Now you will multiply this. 9 fives are 45. Means 5. You have carry 4. 9 to the 18 and 4, 22, carry 2 and you will have 50, uh, 9, 6 are 54 and, uh, and 54 and 55, 56, I think it just will be the answer, 6, 25, 5, 9. Hmm. 5625 volts. Okay, 5625 volts answer. Minus, minus 56. 5625 volts. This is your answer number B. Okay, so please note down. This is your answer. Uh, better, there is one more. Uh, question in it last question uh, just take the screenshot first then we will discuss that i will tell you how to solve okay i will give you the hint the main thing now to solve the numerical is the calculation and the formula and how to apply the formula to solve the question that is important and with practice you will understand that done Okay, take the screenshot. Okay, so this is your answer number B. Okay, write down. Okay, so last question we will solve answer number means after that they are saying find a point on the line joining the two charges where the electric potential is zero. Very easy. Means suppose that point is here, that point is here and this point is at a distance of suppose uh, x. And electrostatics uh, means this is suppose at a distance of x. Suppose this is point P. So this distance will become 0 0.12 uh, minus x simply. So now uh, at point P they are saying the potential is 0. At point P the potential is 0. And find the value of x. Means they are saying find the point on the line joining the two charges where the electric potential is zero means the electric potential at point p is zero so electric potential at point p will be due to q1 and due to q2 so you will say the electric potential due to q1 plus electric potential electric potential due to q1 at point p electric potential due to q2 at point p is equal to zero then you will apply here k q y r it will be k q1 y r1 plus k q2 y r2 okay so now k what is q1 q1 is 60 into 10 to the power minus 9 what is r1 r1 is will be this distance because due to this charge here you want to find the potential so between the charge and this point P, the distance is x. So it will be x plus k and q2. q2 is minus 40 into 10 to the power minus 9. What is r2? 
R2 is this distance. Okay, 0.12 minus x. 0.12 minus x. Now uh, take the terms out which are common. So k into 10 to the power minus 9. And one more term, I think you can take common. 10 also you can take common. So here you will have 6y x. And here you will have minus 4 divided by 0.12 minus x. Now this k into 10 to the power 9 can be written as 9 into 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 9 multiplied by 10. Now you can take LCM and remember this value is equal to 0. So here you will take the LCM. LCM will be uh, x multiplied by 0.12 minus x and you will multiply this 6 with this. this. So it will become 0.72 minus 6x minus 4x. Hmm. Okay, this is this this all is equal to zero. This all is equal to zero. So you will have uh, minus 10x. Okay, okay, this thing will become zero because this is zero. And this will also be multiplied to zero, so you will have only zero point seven two minus ten x is equal to zero. So you will have ten x is equal to zero point seven two. So x you will have zero point seven two divided by ten. So your answer will be zero point zero seven two meter. Sorry, meter means. That point is lying at a distance of at a distance of 0.072 meter from the charge Q1. Okay. Please uh, take the screenshot. So now we will meet in the next class. i am doing the calculation fastly because i have done a lot of practice that is why you can also do that okay hamza and nida if you have taken the screenshots and please arrange the screenshots in a proper manner and uh, uh, both of you we will meet in the next class now Okay. Okay, Hamza and Nida. Take on the screenshots. The okay. So now uh, we will meet in the next class. Okay.